Hey friends, when it comes to MIDI sidechain ducking, it doesn't matter whether you're using ShaperBox, LFO Tool, Envelope MIDI, Gatekeeper, Nova, Evade, STFU, or the best, Slink's new and awesome Max device, Duck Buddy, you can't MIDI sidechain without MIDI. All these plugins need MIDI information or MIDI triggers to do what they do. So let's say you'd like to do some sidechain ducking, but the problem is you created all your drums with audio samples and arrangement view. Now you could use sidechain compression, but let's say you want to use one of these devices. How do you do the thing? Well, that's what we're going to solve today. Okay, so this is exactly what I'm talking about here. You can see that the drums in this tune were composed by just taking audio samples and dragging them into Ableton and sequencing them in arrangement view, right? And at the moment, if I were to use any of the devices that I've already talked about, the only device or devices that would work in a sidechain configuration would be compressors because compressors react to audio. Okay, in this case, we've got our drums sequenced as audio. And so none of those devices are gonna work, right? So the challenge ahead of us here is to make it so that these audio samples are sending MIDI or MIDI notes so that we can trigger any of the devices, right? So one way you could do this is you could get a plugin because some of them exist where they listen to audio and they spit out MIDI notes um, and they're used for drum replacement. But in this specific situation, I wanna look at something else. When you right click on the top of an audio clip, Okay, you can go down to this thing that says convert drums to new MIDI track. Now, if I were to go through and click on each one of these audio samples and click convert drums to new MIDI, that would take legitimately forever. Okay, because if you zoom out and look at this whole tune, yeah, that's going to take a long time. Instead, what you can do is you can select all of the audio. Okay, and you want to make sure you get the audio in there. Right, so everything's in there and you can right click and go to consolidate. Now, what does Consolidate do? Consolidate essentially takes disparate clips and makes them all into one single clip by rendering them out. So check it out. Now, I'm only just working in this section, okay, because I just want to make this like simple for you all. But essentially, here we go. Now we've got this all consolidated into one clip, right? Now, the next thing I want to do is right click on this and then go down to Convert Drums to New MIDI Track. Okay, now what this is going to do is it's going to listen to the audio and convert it into MIDI. Blammo. So now we have a drum rack, right, that contains a bunch of samples. And it interpreted <laughs> these kick drums as kick drums and uh, some hi-hat hits. That's pretty funny. So the kick drums sound like this. <laughs> and then the way that it interpreted it sounded like this. Right, so I don't need really any of these hi-hat hits. I can just go ahead and delete them. And you'll find that as you do this, whenever you're doing this, the Ableton's gonna try to do its best to interpret your drums as kick, snare, and hi-hat. And it will use different frequency ranges to do that. We're not worried about that. All we're worried about is this MIDI. So I could also just delete everything in here. I don't need any of this, it's all gone, okay? I just deleted the drum rack. All I need is just the MIDI, right? And so now I can rename this kick, Boom. So now we have MIDI information. And if I zoom in real close here, look at this. We're right on the money, right? And there's a little bit of feel to these kick drums. As you can see, there's a little bit of time shift here and you can see it follows it perfectly. Blam. Look how easy that is, right? So now I'm gonna go down to my bass track and let's go ahead and just listen to this idea. So as you can hear, there are sections of this where the kick drum and the bass are in conflict, right? Uh, a lot of the low end or the thump of the kick drum is getting eaten up by the bass and it's hard to hear the initial transient, so on and so forth. You know the deal. So in this bass track, I've got this giant long line chain of things going on here. But at the end, I'm going to go ahead and use Duck Buddy. Blam. So why with all the options that are available out there am I choosing to use Duck Buddy? Well, Slink, I gotta say you came up with the best sidechain ducking solution, MIDI sidechain ducking solution in Ableton Live. Congratulations, you killed it. 
Duck Buddy is awesome because every single feature that I want in the sidechain ducking solution is here, okay? Um, well, I'm not going to go over this whole thing. If you want to see a full-on deep dive how to use this thing, go to Slink's initial video, which I'll put at the top. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run you through quickly how I would use it here, okay? So first of all, I need to choose my input. And my input, as you can see, is kick, right? Kick was what I named right here. See this? That's what I named the MIDI, right? So now... I'm just going to leave it on its initial setting for now because it's pretty it's pretty drastic and we'll be able to hear it move. In fact, I'll make it a little bit more drastic just so we can hear, okay? So Duck Buddy is listening to the kick drum, okay? It's listening to this kick MIDI, right? And now it's going to duck every single time the kick happens. And you can see the little indicator light show you every time it gets a trigger, right? So here we go. Okay, so you can really hear that bass ducking out of the way every single time the kick drum hits, right? Now let me show you another reason why Duck Buddy is really great. So I'm going to go back up to the top here and we're going to take a look at this MIDI. If I double click on this clip, we can see, I'm going to pull this up a bit. We can see that there's some velocity information. Look at that. We were going all the way down to 64 and we're going all the way up to 127. So we've got a lot of range here on these kick drums. Another rad thing about Ableton's audio to MIDI converter inside of its context menu is that it also translates velocity information. It takes the gain or the volume of each sample and translates that as velocity information. Now, most of these solutions that I named earlier for MIDI sidechaining don't address velocity. And some of them do, but Duck Buddy really addresses it in an awesome way just by turning on this velocity button. When I click on this velocity button, Duck Buddy is going to duck the bass in differing amounts depending upon how much velocity is going in. So, and you can set the depth of that with this little depth knob. So maybe minus infinity is a lot, okay? It definitely is a lot. Maybe I don't need it to go all the way down. So maybe I'll kind of back this off a little bit. And of course, I want that initial transient. I don't need this crazy long line right here. So something you can do is treat this just like you would treat automation in Ableton and hold the option key and see that little little guy go up there. I can kind of bend this up a little bit, right? So now we have a little bit less of a weighty kick. And then another thing I can do is I can move this up a little bit, right? So initial transient, weight of the kick. And I can also turn off snapping if I want to be able to move this freely. So maybe we'll try something like that, okay? And quick side note, if you're enjoying my teaching style, you might also enjoy this 40 minute long Ableton speed training webinar where I go over what I consider to be the most important skills and tactics for creating music in Ableton. Anyone at any skill level can truly benefit from this training. Also, pro tip, if you watch the whole thing, you might get a hefty discount code on my Ableton online courses and community at the end. Anyway, so let's go ahead and take a listen to what we have now. So you, you can hear it right there, especially with that softer kick drum. We're not ducking the bass as much as we did at the downbeat and then up here. Let's go ahead and listen to this section because this section is essentially the same repeat. This has, just has kind of a different sound to it. Okay, so now I want to show you a quick pro tip and maybe a suggestion for Slink um, when he makes his next uh, software update to Duck Buddy. Something that happens when you solo out a track and you have post mi mixer selected is that all of a sudden the kick data won't come into here. So let's say you're checking for snaps. Listen to what happens. I'll play this bass. And as you can see, there's no kick drum data coming in. You have to actually choose pre-effects. And now what will happen is, is that Duck Buddy is not listening to the mixer in Ableton, it's listening directly to the track, and now we get that. Now you can see that that light's lighting up. Now let's say you get a little bit of clicking, there's a tiny bit of clicking in there, and honestly that clicking is probably helping the transients of my kick drum as opposed to screwing them up. But let's just say you're in a situation where that clicking is annoying. You can use the smoothing feature, you can use the look ahead time, uh, I'll put it on, let's try 10, and we'll ramp it down a little bit, and that'll get rid of the clicking for you. Let's pull the depth down just a little bit more. Cool. 
Cool. All right, so let's go ahead and do this one more time really quick. Just as a quick review, I'm going to select the snare track this time, okay? I'm going to right-click, go to Consolidate. Rad. Next thing I'll do is I'll right-click on the top bar. This context menu comes up. Go down to Convert Drums to New MIDI Track. Blam. Now if I open my MIDI Track, I'm not really sure what Ableton converted this to. Let's find out. <laughs> it thought it was a hi-hat. Doesn't matter. I'm going to delete this. All I need is the MIDI. Right-click on this. I'm going to rename this to Snare. Now, I'll go down to my bass. I'll grab another Duck Buddy. Drop it in there. I'm going to choose my input as Snare, right? I'll choose Pre-Effects just because that's what I want it to do. I wish that it defaulted to this. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a listen. Now, that snare drum is an extremely fast transient, right? So I don't need any weight at the beginning. It's just a quick little click. So I'm going to really, really make this really, really snap quickly. I'll turn off snapping here because I need to just kind of be able to adjust this just a little bit. Something like that. I'll pull that back down a little bit. Let's see what this does. Now listen to how the snare drum is in the background with Duck Buddy off, and then with Duck Buddy on, the snare drum is now present and right in your face. Listen to the difference here. Wild. Now, again, if you didn't watch my other video on comparing compression to MIDI sidechain ducking in general, I think that it's worth watching that. I'll put that up here. Essentially, Duck Buddy is great for electronic music, great for music where you're trying to put one thing here, then one thing there, and everything's really mechanical, right? Again, I still think that compression, sidechain compression, has a place in mixing, okay? Especially when you're working with live drums, when you're working with a lot of subtle changes, right? Duck Buddy has a really cool uh, velocity feature, and that's very, very useful and it can get some really awesome results when working with dynamic material, but nothing's ever gonna beat a compressor because you have a ratio, okay? For every, let's say you have a four to one ratio, for every four decibels that goes in, one decibel comes out. So the relationship between what's coming in and what's coming out can really, really change and it'll change in an exponential way because we're using these ratios to determine the input and output level, okay? There's a reason why compressors have been used for decades and decades because they do the job in a very specific way and it sounds very pleasing to the ear, okay? But also, MIDI side chaining, especially for aggressive music, for music where there's not that much dynamic stuff going on, you can't really beat this stuff and you can't really beat Duck Buddy. At this moment, the only caveats to using Duck Buddy is that A, you need Max for Live, okay? And B, you need Ableton, right? So if you have Ableton and you have Max for Live, there's nothing else you should be using for this specific solution if you're making non-dynamic electronic music, okay? So yeah, hats off to you. Slink, great job. Everybody go get this device, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.